Hello everybody, welcome back to another video for the day. Now we're going back into r slash Tales of Neckbeard, the lovely cringe and story time that you can smell through your computer. Alright, let's get right into that lovely content. You know the dealio. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's go. Our first story comes from us from your username Lady Rokepchen. Neckbeard coworker wants to use his weapon to protect me from creepy customers. This story isn't too eventful, but this dude was definitely a neckbeard, so I thought I'd share it anyway. I worked summers at a small family-owned hot tub and pool business in my hometown. This particular coworker Tyler was a very interesting human who checked off a lot of neckbeard boxes along with some redneck ones. He was 23 and about 6 foot 3 and 230 pounds so he had a bit of a belly on him and he had somewhat unruly curly brown hair that he always covered with a Blue Lives Matter flag baseball cap. He also had some scruff around his slightly chubby chin which if it weren't so sparse would have been the trademark neckbeard. He drank Monster and Mountain Dew daily, and his diet largely consisted of weird food combos he made like cheeseburger salad. He had a few major obsessions, which are included, but are not limited to, anime, D&D, League of Legends, World of Warcraft, and especially Shadowrun. I still don't quite understand what that is, but he explained it and his characters to me in way too many times, so I should probably know. He also asked me repeatedly to join him and his friends in their campaign, which I declined every time. Tyler also was a huge weapons nut and mentioned more than a dozen times that he was working towards getting a concealed carry license on his days off and one day hoped to train in the police academy to become an officer. He often lamented about the fact that he wasn't allowed to carry it with him at work to protect us all. I should mention that he was the only male employee. The rest of us, including myself, were teenage girls. I always just laughed that comment off, thinking that it was a weird attempt to impress me. Tyler also happened to have somewhat of a thing for me and actually asked me out once, but I turned him down and he took a while, but still clearly tried to make what he thought was a good impression on me. So one day, I'm going around the empty store and cleaning the inside of the empty hot tubs on display like I do most days, and suddenly in comes a 40-ish year old man. He's medium height, balding, greasy, and sort of mousy looking, with beady eyes, sallow yellow skin skin and an unshaven face. He came up to me as I'm crouched down in one of the hot tubs and just stares at me for a bit, breathing loudly and shallowly. Hi sir, can I help you today? I ask, trying to be polite though pretty weirded out by the energy I'm getting from this dude. He stutters and he tells me he's just looking around, though he continues to stand right next to the hot tub and stare directly at me. He has this weird neurotic nervous energy that was really putting me off. I was getting super creeped out, he began making awkward small talk with me and asked, do you own a hot tub? In which I said no, I was 18 years old, I obviously did not, but that if he was wanted to discuss purchasing one, I could call Tyler over. He was the designated salesman. He doesn't respond to that, but instead suddenly asks, so you guys keep all your offices with the business records out there? Or in the back somewhere? I didn't even know how to answer that question. Clearly, this guy was either terrible at small talk or trying to plot a robbery. To this day, I'm not sure which one, but we were never successfully robbed, so that's good, lol. Before I even opened my mouth, Tyler came over and introduced himself, and while shaking his hand, walked the man over a few feet away from me. A few seconds later, the dude just said an abrupt, awkward goodbye and left the building. He hadn't looked at any of the other tubs or even come in the water sample to be tested like most customers do. Water testing is what we're most known for. I'm not sure what his intentions were that day, but I have a really icky gut feeling that they weren't good. Tyler comes back to me with a concerned look on his face and Deadbutt says, I've never felt more naked without my weapon. Can't have old creeps looking around my pretty female co-workers. I feel like this is the redneck neckbeard version of I'll protect you with my skills of the blade, my lady. lol. In all seriousness though, Tyler really wasn't a bad guy, just an odd character. I am grateful for him getting that weirdo away from me, only wish the best for him really. Hope he got into the police academy to save more females with his weapon for a living. You know, I'd have to honestly say, among all of the neckbeard stories that I've read up to this point, this has got to be one of the best endings that I've seen. It, it didn't end whatsoever in a very creepy way, like hey, I'm not going to want to ever talk to this person ever again. Again. Yeah, it's true, he is really just an odd character, but he did a good job at keeping his morals and diffusing situation, which probably would have escalated had he have done nothing or 
done the stereotypical know the blade man, um, lady kind of trout. Our next story comes to us from username Octonaz. Tech in neckbeard. Warning, long butt story ahead. Hello, I saw the stories on this Reddit and realized that I have a story of a neckbeard I met. It was honestly really strange since I never saw him as a neckbeard until I ended my friendship with him. Octonaz, me, a woman who is working on her social skills. Tech, a neckbeard who has no filter. So this story takes place around last year in September. I was upgrading my math in order to finally finish and get my high school diploma. The school that I went to for it accepts any student for free as long as you're below 21. We only paid for the textbooks and bus passes, etc. Anyway, this story begins when I was getting to know my classmates. I started talking to my classmates because I highly regretted not socializing with my peers in the past, so I decided to work on myself and gain myself some new friends. It was at least two weeks in the semester that I got pretty familiar with certain people there. All of them were interesting, except for this one guy. He was interesting in a bad way. We'll call him Tech, shortened from Tekken, the thing he loves the most. Tech didn't look like a typical neck beard. He was small, just a few inches taller than me. I'm five foot one. He's not overweight, but he's rather thin, always wore big clothes, sometimes some anime merch, and has black glasses. His hair was shoulder length, never tied, always looked greasy, and he has this thick full beard. There was always a certain smell that oozed off of him that was horrible. Also, I can never forget how his eyes never seemed to blink when you talked to him. So at some point, my teacher asked me to sit by his group just for one lesson. I was eager because this meant possibly new friendships. I approached their table and I already had knowledge that they were the sort of nerdy type people. I overheard them talk about Call of Duty and anime before, so I wasn't all too worried about conversation topics. When I took a seat, I introduced myself to the table, I got a few laughs, and started working on our math. Eventually, the topic of anime entered the table, and that's when I mentioned casually that I used to be quite a fan of it until I just grew out of it. Then Tex says something like, Not me, I'll stay a weeb forever, which was cool, alright? You do you kind of thing. But he decided to add something among the lines of, especially off-brand. Off-brand is great. He went off about off-brand and how he watches it all the time, saying how nice and cute the anime girls are. Being unsettled by it, I decided to change the topic by asking him about the background picture of his phone. It was just in front of us and would turn on once in a while for notifications. For a while, he talked about his passion for the game, then gradually started going off about how hot the girls were in Tekken. I jokingly agreed, which was a mistake, with him, but he started to talk seriously about how big her tots are. The topic changed, and we started talking about how we get to school. I mentioned the area I lived in and, that, and what buses I used. It turns out, he lives in the same area and uses the same bus. He continued with, I see you on the buses all the time, but you don't see me, and it gave me the biggest freaking chills. I always brushed off the way we met as a bad first impression. We've all been there, so I tried not to make judgment on it and let it go. Eventually, we started going on the buses together. Every time I spent time with him, it was either always an upsetting experience in different ways. He never stops talking about Tekken. It's as if he lives for it. When he talks about his Twitch streaming, it's about Tekken. What he does after school, Tekken. Where he talks to people, in Tekken Amino. I always try to ask him what other hobbies he had, and he doesn't really have an answer. I suggest him a few things he might like, and he doesn't really care for them. It was sad whenever we'd talk about what we'd do for the weekend, and he'd always answer with, play Tekken all day. I forgot to mention, he has a very big ego. I always assumed it was because of Tekken, especially Twitch streaming, assuming he was telling the truth, and he has hundreds of people watching him, and how he believes he's good enough to be a pro player for tournaments. It extends to the people in the Amino chat. How every single guy or girl wanted him, he's pansexual, to be with him and always complains like, oh, Octonaz, I have another guy in Amino chat that wants me. They're so thirsty. Ugh. He's also bragging about how he watches off-brand out loud in the hallways at some point, even when a teacher passed by. I'm not sure if this is true or not. He'd rank the teachers on a rate of which one he'd frick, and the rest of my classmates and I were really disgusted. It. Hell, one of the guys in his math group also thinks he's weird and needs to tone it down. When I introduced him to a friend of mine, she works in a shop that's on her way to school, he immediately asked me if I could hook them up, which I proceeded to say no to. One day in class, we started talking about dating and eventually talked about the LGBT bar that I should visit underneath our school, where he chimes in to say with confidence, I could probably get a twink, I have a few moves. Everyone freaking lost their shot and refused to believe what he said. It 
eventually led to a bet to see if by the end of the week he gets a date to prove he has smooth moves. During the bet, I felt really bad because everyone kept comparing him to me and say how he would never be like me. None of them really know how I started similar to him, having so much problem socializing and I couldn't handle the fact that they think he can't improve himself when I know he can. So I gave him advice whenever I could and told him to prove them wrong that you are better than they depict him to be. I told him I rooted for him and tried to encourage him. In the end, he always brushed my advice aside, saying, I know, over and over again. He ended up losing the bet and everyone expected it. Then eventually, I had enough of him. It happened when we were going home together again. At this point, I was used to his antics and of nothing but Tekken, wanting to be with someone, wanting to mess around, etc. I hadn't given up on trying to help him get out of it, but I was on the edge. We took the train home together to give him a new experience and to show him another way to get to school. After we left the train station and went on a bus, he started talking, making plans with the rest of our classmates. I didn't want to make plans with him, it's mean to say, but I felt really tired by every time I hung out with him, as nothing really happens and he talks about the same thing. So I told him that I'll probably be busy working out. I told him about a gym that I go to, and he showed interest in working out before, so when he said that he can work out with me, I wasn't surprised. I told him he can't because it's a women's gym. Okay, then I'll just go to the other gyms around it. There are no other gyms around it. I'll wait for you to finish outside then. What the frick? I got really pissed when he just said it without thinking. I blurted out a, don't you know why some of us women want to work out in a women's gym? One of the reasons are because of people like that. He kept going and practically ignored my statement. I can also cross-dress to get in if you want. After that, I couldn't take it anymore. I said, that's how you freaking get arrested and went silent for the rest of the bus ride. I texted him through Instagram about ending our friendship and how I hope that he can understand the weight of the things he says. I wished him the best and nothing happened between us after. Thank God. Sorry it's so long, but I hope at least some of you enjoyed it. TLDR, Neckbeard who tried to help out said really creepy slash gross things and I couldn't take it anymore. And with that, that is going to have to be it for the video. If you would like what you have seen, be sure to like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and consider subscribing to the channel, becoming part of the ever-growing amazing notification squad. I'll be sure to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.